We've come to expect some pretty low blows and some pretty superficial so-called analysis when we look at the pop news media nowadays, but this one really stands out. It has to do with conceptions about life beginning at conception, it has to do with the U.S. Constitution, and it has to do with MSNBC's Joy Reid feeling completely comfortable when she likens Supreme Court Justice Sam Alito to a mullah. Hi everyone, I'm Gardner Goldsmith for MRC TV. You know, someone at MSNBC must have thought that calling Joy Reid's weeknight wonderland of wokeism the readout would be pithy and apt. But given her propensity for hyperbolic outbursts, the freakout might be a better name. On her Friday edition of the program, mere hours after an unnamed majority of the U.S. Supreme Court justices gave their okay to a January FDA move to allow retail pharmacies to sell the abortion pill Mifepristone in store, Reed attacked Justice Samuel Alito for being the only other justice to openly join Clarence Thomas in offering a public dissent. Reed really didn't like what Alito said, and in live chatter with MSNBC legal panelist Lisa Rubin and National Abortion Rights Action League, that's NARAL, President Mini Timuraju, Reed offered a portion of Alito's public dissent. Well, let me just skip to this part. Here, the government has not dispelled legitimate doubts mm. that it would even obey an unfavorable order in these cases, much less that it would choose to take enforcement actions to which it has strong objections. Now, any reasonable skeptic of Alito's opinion, any dissenter from the dissent, might ask if this is a warranted fear. He or she might research Biden policies and the official and even personal ways that Biden has engaged in activity that has been unwarranted by the U.S. Constitution or unwarranted by fundamental ethics. And that person researching it might see if Alito might be justified. But this isn't the kind of research and thoughtful exploration that Reed serves on her program. That's a pretty glaring admission of weakness and a pretty churlish thing to write down in your dissent. This guy seems to be all in his feelings that the American people oppose his attempts to play mullah instead of Supreme Court justice and ban abortion. Because as everyone knows, a judge who expresses worries about an executive branch rejecting a Supreme Court ruling, well, that's akin to an Islamic religious leader issuing edicts on Quranic law. Reed couldn't have taken the time to explain to viewers the fundamentals of the case, which by the way, had been appealed to the Supreme Court after the Alliance Defending Freedom, the ADF, brought suit in November last year in the Northern U.S. District Court of Texas, Amarillo Division. And they did it on behalf of the Alliance for Hippocratic Medicine, the American Association of Pro-Life Obstetricians and Gynecologists, and the American College of Pediatricians, the Christian Medical and Dental Associations, and four pro-life doctors. Yeah, it was kind of a big deal. And she could have explained that when the plaintiffs won in that court, the judge ordered a halt to the FDA approval of the abortion pill based on very fundamental definitions as noted by the ADF and as reported by MRC TV at the time of the initial filing. Well, the key, everybody, to the Alliance argument was that the FDA, and we can discuss the dubious constitutionality of that later, that the FDA accepted and promoted the argument that mifepristone cured a malady, that somehow the natural creation and sustainment of a human life in the womb was a disease that the abortion drug cured. That was the key to the argument. Wrote the ADF at the time, quote, pregnancy is not an illness and chemical abortion drugs don't provide a therapeutic benefit. They end a baby's life and they pose serious and life-threatening complications to the mother, said ADF senior counsel Julie Marie Blake. The FDA never had the authority to approve these dangerous drugs for sale. 
We urge the court to listen to the doctors we represent who are seeking to protect girls and women from the documented dangers of chemical abortion drugs. So, in fact, the FDA has played fast and loose with this drug for quite some time. In fact, as Caitlin Lewis writes for Newsweek, quote, Mifepristone was first approved by the FDA in 2000 for medical termination of a pregnancy through the first seven weeks of gestation. The decision was extended, however, in 2016 to allow the drug to be used for up to 10 weeks gestation. Other decisions have been made since that have expanded access to the abortion pill, which is used in over half of medically terminated pregnancies in the U.S. In December 2021, the FDA removed the requirement that mifepristone could only be dispensed in person. And in January, the administration approved a rule change that allows retail pharmacies to offer the medication. Some would call it poison, not medication. And that's part of the problem with the approval of the so-called medication. It doesn't cure a malady. Some also would recognize the fact that the manufacture or sale of poison is not an aggressive act, let alone something that should see federal intervention from a food and drug administration that has no place in the Constitution. But on the unjustified normative level at which Reed, the Supreme Court, and most politicians and bureaucrats at the FDA operate, the Constitution, well, that's irrelevant to them. And they go by what the statutes say for the FDA. This is actually what Alito and Clarence Thomas, who wrote a separate dissent, found to be one of the key problems with the Biden FDA approval of the drug for in-store sale. The Biden move is predicated on an assumption that runs counter to the meanings of illness and cure, thus undercutting the rationale of FDA rules going back to its establishment of safe and effective standards in the 1960s. A constitutionalist easily can argue that even those standards are illegitimate based on the lack of any legitimate constitutional justification for the FDA itself. But this isn't where Alito and Thomas took their stand, nor did Texas Attorney Judge Matthew Kaczmarek when he found in favor of blocking the FDA approval. They simply looked at the FDA's own stated standards and found this approval to be utterly inconsistent. Evidently, Reed doesn't like someone pointing out consistency, and she will liken such a person to a mullah in a theological state. Mullah instead of Supreme Court justice. The trouble is, she is the one pushing a religion, the secular religion of state worship itself, of the idea that anything the state wants, the state gets, as long as it fits her preferences. For of course, she adores the state and she wants more of its edicts, and she shows absolutely no interest in checking out even the most basic terms of that government when the government breaches its own rules, but she likes it. Yeah, the breaches are to her liking. Consistency means nothing to these people. The ends justify the means. <laughs> Amazing. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Please like and subscribe, especially over on Rumble, where they don't censor us. We can see you at YouTube as well. They do censor us there sometimes. And please double check that you're subscribed at YouTube because we still get people who get dropped. It's amazing they're still doing that. I don't know. Find us at Facebook as well. And of course, join in the conversation there and join us at mrctv.org. That's mrctv.org to find out what the whole team is doing. And while you're there, please consider shopping in the store or contributing to the Media Research Center in its 36th year fighting left-wing bias like this in the popular media. And of course, see us over on TikTok and on Instagram and find us on Twitter. On Twitter, I'm at Gard Goldsmith and on Gab, I'm at Gardner Goldsmith. Thanks so much, everyone. For MRC TV, I'm Gardner Goldsmith.